Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt again, and in this video, we're going to look at five tips for your Cessna home flight simulator cockpit. Let's jump right in. All right, number one is your purpose. Why are you building a flight simulator? First of all, are you, are you, do you just need to fill some time? Do you need to have a new hobby and you just want to fill that gap? And uh, what your purpose is is really going to drive and determine a lot of the, the other tips and considerations that I have here in this video. So I just want to talk to you a little bit about what some of those purposes might be and how you're going to use that. I will uh, probably expand on this in a future video, but um, are you doing instrument training? Are you doing pi private pilot training? Do you just want to fly around and have a fun time inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator and enjoy the view? It's very possible that if you fly around in Microsoft Flight Simulator and you just enjoy the view, you might need some big screens, you might enjoy that. Um, if you're like me, um, then I got into this because I needed to do some additional flight training and I wanted to get more current and more familiarized with the instruments, with the G5s, with the 53430s, so that I could fly my real life aircraft, okay? So lots of different purposes, lots of different reasons that you might get into this. Think about, are you going to use this long term or short term? Is it just something you need for six months and then you might sell it? Uh, you know, that might determine how you build this. Are you going to, you know, if you're going to sell it, you're going to want to make it saleable, just like a house. You know, you don't want to buy a house that you plan on selling and then make and then find out just to find out that nobody wants it. Right. So, um, yeah, lots of considerations there. So just think about what it is. Uh, that you want uh, and what your purpose is as you go into these additional considerations, okay? All right, number two is the location of your flight simulator. So let's talk about where you're going to put it, all right? Do you have a, do you have a basement? You need like a secluded, it's really nice to have kind of a, a private secluded space where there's not going to be kids or family or spouses or whoever just kind of rolling through the area while you're trying to have a flight. Um, so you, you probably want to have it maybe in the back of an office, in a basement. If you have a bunker, that would probably be the most perfect option. Um, or stick it out and maybe if, depending on what your weather like is like, maybe stick it in the garage or something back in the corner where you can just have some privacy and enjoy your time using your flight simulator, enjoying that, that build, but make sure that you put it someplace, uh, that's localized where you can enjoy the build and enjoy the actual process of flying it once you're done um, so that you have a good time with your flight simulator. You just you want to be able to get back to it easily and you want it to be in a, sp a space that you're going to enjoy spending that time in. Like this is kind of as, as close as I get to a man cave. I call this my fun room. Um, you know, we've got the TV, the treadmill, um, I try to set it up and, and just try and keep things fun, but I also do a little bit of work in here as well. So this is probably the fa my favorite room in the house so that I can have the flight sim and uh, at times both my, my spouse, my wife, and I can both enjoy this, this space. Flexibility. All right. So this one kind of dives into your, it sounds common sense, but um, when I say flexible, I mean, you want to build this for upgradability. You want it to be possibly flexible enough that you might be able to move it, um, but you might also want to be able to upgrade parts and pieces, avionics, flight controls. So the more flexible it is, the more upgradable it is, uh, the more you're going to enjoy it. So when you first start out on your journey, and I believe that a lot of you guys watching this video right now are here because you're trying to figure out how to get into this flight simming world. What's it going to be like? What do I need to build this flight sim, right? Um, so uh, you might be like, I want a Cessna 172, but what if down the road you want a uh, a Mooney, a Mooney Ovation, um, or you want a uh, a sling um, to fly, or an RV-10, or maybe uh, some completely different kind of an aircraft that I haven't even mentioned here? Um, well, maybe you want to make sure that you get a, a TPM unit that has uh, a prop prop fixture on it. Maybe you want to get uh, some kind of a switch panel that has your gear flap, uh, gear switch on it, you know, so just make sure that you get something set up so that you have an, the ability to upgrade in the future. So one of the things that I really like about my flight sim with, uh, with, uh, state level avionics is that it actually has a modular panel on the right side there so that 
it can be used. I can actually pull that out and put a six, uh, put a, a Garmin 750 in there instead of the 530, 430, and then I can actually put in uh, a 750, and I believe I've got it set up for the 430 as well. So there's flexibility there. It's a modular panel. It's screwed in with wing nuts, so I can just unscrew it real quick, pop in the new panel, um, plug in the new devices, and we're off to the races if I will, if I feel like doing that. So um, that's a really cool feature. I really enjoy that level of flexibility. If you haven't watched our original video on how to build your flight simulator and what went into this flight simulator back here, I'll leave a link up here in the corner. Make sure to go watch that video as well, and that'll give you guys a more well-rounded idea of what actually went into this flight simulator. Number four, uh, realism. All right, so what do I mean by realism? Like, you know, are we talking about, you know, a realistic aircraft? Do I need to go buy a real aircraft cockpit and start stuffing all of my avionics and flight controls into a real Cessna 172 cockpit that just happened to be decommissioned or whatever? Um, you don't have to do that, although that would be, you know, next level realism for sure is being able to sit in a real cockpit that has been decommissioned and you can put some flight window, you know, put a 55 inch TV screen or a flight projection up front. That'd be pretty realistic. But when I say realistic, I mean, instead of just having a hodgepodge of stuff all over the place or items that don't reflect the real aircraft, then, you know, think about that realisticness. Try to mimic whatever aircraft it is that you're flying in real life. So that way, when you go to fly your real aircraft, the stuff, the buttons, the switches, the avionics, the controls, they're in similar locations at, at the very least. And they're similar to what you're actually flying with. Like when I, like I said earlier, I flew with the 530-430. Um, so in the aircraft that I was flying with the dual G5. So what did I build into my cockpit? I built, uh, I, well, I added a 530, but technically I was flying with dual 430s. But that's what I purchased. I purchased dual G5s. It was a six-pack old steam gauges cockpit, and then I put in uh, a 530-430 so that I could get familiar with those types of avionics in my aircraft, all right? So, um, and then get the air, get the checklist for the actual aircraft that you're flying so you can go through that checklist and, and see what it's like to actually go through those motions, okay? Whatever habits you're creating in the simulator, they should transfer over to the real aircraft, okay? All right, last but not least, let's talk about software considerations. Uh, what do I mean software? I mean, you've got, uh, don't forget a flight simulator is nothing but a, a computer that runs on software like Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12, DCS, uh, prepared, all right? There's a lot of different options out there for you, um, but even after you do that, there's a lot of plugins, add-ons, extensions, things that you can build into this. There's also uh, other programs, different software that you can get like Pilot Edge, VADSIM for talking to ATC. And then there's other programs like Sim Innovations creates Air Manager and different types of software that you can use so that you have touch screens, you can build out customized cockpits. Um, I think even Navigraph uh, is, would be a, a software consideration. They create uh, basically a paperless cockpit uh, for flight planning, for aircraft following along with where you're at, upgrading your nav aids, the frequencies, locations, and all that stuff. So that way you don't get the little message on your 530, 430, or 750, 650, whatever it is that you're using that says nav data out of out of date. So I pay, I, I do pay for that. Uh, thank you, Navigraph, for that um, because I hate getting that message that says that my nav data is out of out of date. So I do try to make sure that that's in date and hope that. It is. Try to figure this stuff out ahead of time so you know what you're building, a Mac or a PC, Microsoft Flight Simulator X-Plane. Um, you know, all these determinations are really going to make a big difference when you start figuring out what elements and what avionics and what technical gadgets you're actually going to be sticking into your uh, into your simulator. We've got your, your purpose, your location, being able to create a flexible system for you, creating a realistic cockpit so that it mimics exactly what you're flying, and software, and I guess you could throw in hardware considerations as well. Those are my big tips for you today as you build your Cessna 172 flight cockpit or any other general aviation cockpit. All right, if you guys like what you see here, uh, we're doing the best that we can to help you guys out. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below. 
and I am more than happy to see uh, see what you guys write in, and I will talk to you guys in another video. Take care, and see you next time.